Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going to be stress testing the Raspberry Pi 4 to see how it holds up with different cooling solutions. Let's get started. So in this video, we're going to be testing out four different ways of cooling the Raspberry Pi. For measuring, we're going to be using the Pi 4 just in an enclosed case. The next step, what we're going to do is remove the top of the case and just have the Raspberry Pi with open air and see how that does. After that, we are going to use an open air cooling case with a fan. This is a very budget case. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. And lastly, we're going to use this huge and ridiculous ice tower cooling fan, which is probably one of the best cooling solutions out there right now for the Raspberry Pi 4. All right, I have my Raspberry Pi booted up. I'm currently monitoring the temperature. Now, the Raspberry Pi temperature at idle is about 63 to 64 degrees Celsius. I do have the lid to the case on. So this very first test is going to be the Raspberry Pi 4 in a case with the lid on. For those of you who don't know, I live in Canada. So temperatures up here are generally colder than down south. On top of that, it's fall time. So what I've done is I've closed the door to my igloo to try to heat things up a little bit in here to present a more realistic situation for the computer. So what I have right now in this room, I'm trying to keep things nice and toasty for a control. So my room right now is slightly, actually, actually it's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit pushing close to 27 to 28 degrees Celsius. So it's nice and toasty in this room. Might be cold for some, but in my mind, this is a very healthy environment just to test the Raspberry Pi 4. If I were to test this Raspberry Pi in places like a freezer or right beside an air conditioning vent, it wouldn't really give a consistent or reliable reading because temperatures across people's rooms vary, location of the Raspberry Pi matters. So right now, all the vents are closed, my door is closed, and we're sitting at a constant temperature. And I would say it should hopefully be comparable to wherever you are. Now, while I've been sitting talking to you here, the Raspberry Pi temperature has been creeping up. It's now sitting at 68 degrees Celsius, between 67 and 68 at idle. If you take a look at the very top of the screen, and I'll highlight it here, let me just move the mouse. You can see up here, this is the temperature and this is the CPU usage. So the CPU usage is sitting at 1%. So it's not being used very much at all. I'm going to be doing two kinds of tests here. First is the stress test, and this test simulates high load real life usage. The second test that I'm going to be doing is CPU burn, which completely maxes out everything. For all intents and purposes, CPU burn is definitely going to be the more intense test of the two. Stress test is going to give more, I would say, closer to real world numbers if you were doing a whole ton of things and stressing out the system. So for this first stress test, I am just going to use a template stress. You can see the command in the terminal window above me right here. I will also leave a link in the description below so you can copy it yourself. So now I just have to hit enter and let's start this test. So we can immediately see the CPU usage in the top right by the Bluetooth logo way up this way, this way, this way <laughs> at 100%. We can see the temperature of the CPU is already almost at 80. So it's already at 80 degrees, it's already throttling. So we're getting the temperature warning. We can also see that. I'll just move the mouse over so you can see the temperature warning. I'll move this temperature sensor down so you can see the temperature warning already. So it, did, it took literally no time at all. This is with the case closed. Um, again, the Pi 4 runs a lot hotter than the Pi 3. So let's stop this. I'm not even gonna run CPU, actually, let's run CPU burn and see what happens. So I've got the temperatures back down and I'm going to run CPU burn. It's probably going to be the exact same, if not quicker. So we have CPU burn running. I can see all four cores are at 100% in the top right of the screen and we're already at 80. So this is with the case closed, completely sealed, no airflow. Definitely not something I would recommend if you are stressing out the Pi 4. I've taken the lid off the case now. So this is in an open air case for the Raspberry Pi 4. This is the stress test. So we can see it running now. All four cores are at 100%. Temperature is at 74, 75. I can see it creeping up now. 
uh, it's creeping up slower, considerably slower than when the lid was on the case. I'm going to guess the additional airflow is helping, but it's still heating up. Okay, now we're bouncing between 79 and 80, just bouncing above 80 here. We can see the temperature warning at the top right. And now to try CPU burn, this will probably get back to 80 pretty quick here. Uh, we're at 72, 74. It's climbing faster than stress. Uh, so it's not going to take much time at all. I really don't need to time this. All I know is open case or closed case is not really adequate cooling for the Pi 4 if you are stressing it. So this is the third test, the open case with the fan on. Hopefully this goes a little bit better than the other two tests with the closed case and with the lid off. Uh, right now we're idling at 42 degrees. So let's start the stress test and see how things go. So we can see the CPU usage jump up to 100. The test or the uh, temperature here is considerably climbing up from 42. Again, this will run for, I'm gonna run these for 10 minutes uh, if they don't immediately go to 80 degrees and see where they are after 10 minutes. So we're approaching the end of the test and we're holding steady right now at about 58 degrees, which is a lot better overall than I thought it was gonna do under the stress test. So what we're gonna do is flip this over to CPU burn and see how it does. CPU burn again is a little more intensive. The temperatures are back down, so let's start CPU burn and see how this goes. I can immediately see the temperatures start to increase. The CPU is at 100%. And just over a minute into the test and we're already reaching temperatures higher than what stress did. So CPU burn, as you can see, is definitely a more stressful test. And during this cooling, you can actually see the difference between the two tests. With the other two, with the closed case and the open case, they shot up to throttle limits at 80 degrees so quickly that it was really hard to tell the difference. But now you can really see. So we're at, what? what is this now? 63 degrees, 64. So let's give it some more time and see how long it takes to get to 80 or to see when it tops out. So this seems to be holding steady between, I would say 64 to 68 degrees. And I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna end the CPU burn test on just the open case with the fan, but the results are pretty astounding. And before I start this last test, I just kind of wanted to show you the setup here. I find this really funny. Uh, this is a giant attachment. It, it's cool, but funny at the same time because the attachment is almost bigger than the pie. So essentially what this is, this is the ice cooling tower and it's a giant heat sink that sits on top of the CPU. It draws the heat up from the CPU and then there's a fan attached to it here to cool everything down. Now this setup is extremely similar. It's basically a miniature version of a standard air cooler that is on a full size desktop PC. So I'm hoping that this is going to work well. Something to take note of, this ice cooling tower did not come with a bottom piece for the Raspberry Pi to mount onto. So the one I ordered at least didn't. Uh, so what I'm using is a bottom piece from a different case altogether that just happens to work with this solution. And if you're curious, it's the bottom from the case that I just tested out. So this is the open air case with the fan. Um, I'm hoping that this is gonna work. It looks like everything mounts up perfectly, so I'm not too worried, but let's definitely test this out. So now I'm starting the first test, the stress test. We'll give this one 10 minutes. We can see the CPU jump almost immediately in terms of temperature. So it's at 42 degrees right now. Hopefully that doesn't climb too quickly. So it looks like we've stabilized here between 47 and 48 degrees. I don't see it going much up more than this. Uh, it looks to be holding pretty constant right now. All right, the temperatures are back down. Let's try CPU burn. This one's slightly more intensive, and I think this one will determine the winner. I can see temperatures jumping up really quick here. So we're already into the temperatures where the last test stabilized at. This might be neck and neck with just the plain fan situation. I'm not too sure on this one, actually. So we're approaching the end of the test, and we can clearly see that this is obviously gonna be the winner. It's sitting at close to pretty much between 49 and 51 degrees, which is incredibly good for this test. I'm actually really blown away by these results. 
So here are the results. I'm actually still running CPU burn as we speak on the Pi and using an Excel spreadsheet. So I wanted to see if anything else would cause the Pi to crash, but it's actually incredibly stable right now and I'm very surprised. So looking at these results, first and foremost, the closed case. It went to 80 degrees almost immediately using both stress and CPU burn and it didn't make much of a difference at all when I opened the case. So when I just had the case opened, again, it went to 80 degrees with stress and CPU burn almost immediately. With open case, it took maybe 20 seconds longer to do it. Really not a big deal, uh, not a big difference at all. On top of that, I did not test them both for 10 minutes because they're already at the throttling limit, 80 degrees, and I didn't feel like pressing it any further. Now with the open case and fan, and this is just completely open with a fan on top of it, uh, with the stress test, it went between 58 and 60 degrees capping out, uh, and it capped out at CPU burn between 64 and 68 degrees, which I feel is very good for just a fan. Now for looking at the ice tower, so this ice tower cooling situation, uh, the ridiculous situation that I actually like it, it looks very interesting, but is ridiculous overall. Uh, is also ridiculously good. So if we look at the stress test, we're sitting between 46 and 48 degrees, which is 10 degrees cooler than a fan. And if we take a look at CPU burn, it went between 49, it completely capped out between 49 and 51 degrees. And we're still running it right now. And I can see it's sitting, well, 51 to 52, which is pretty impressive. So in conclusion, I definitely think you need cooling on your Raspberry Pi if you are stressing it out in any way, shape, or form. In my last video, I explained whether or not you could use a Raspberry Pi's desktop PC. I'll leave a link to that in the description below as well if you haven't seen it yet. But in that video, I did have to put a fan on it because it was heating up higher than I wanted it to. In all honesty, you can probably just get away with something like this here. This is the Unilinker Raspberry Pi 4 case. This is the exact one that I used for this test. The case comes in at a whopping $9 and I think is a very good value for money. So it's just got a little tiny fan on there and it cools the entire Pi off and does a great job at it too. Now this case did come second in the test, but in my opinion, it doesn't really matter that much because I doubt the average user will be stressing the Raspberry Pi 4 as much as CPU burn does. Now if you are doing anything crazy like overclocking your Pi by a lot or anything like that, that's where you want to start looking at this ice tower. You can see in these tests, it did perform considerably better than all of the other options that I tried. Um, but there are drawbacks. First and foremost, it looks ridiculous. And I mean this with a lot of love because I like how quirky this looks. Um, it, it's very interesting and it does have RGB lighting so you can see it's a blue light. Uh, I don't know if you can change it. I don't really care to because I like blue so it works for me. Uh, but it's a very interesting look to the pie. I would say in terms of space, this Pi now takes up considerably more space that it's a lot taller with this cooling unit on it. So that's something to consider. And secondly is the price. So if I pull up Amazon here, there are a few different links I have open because I've seen them at different prices. Now I am in Canada. I ordered it from Amazon Canada, uh, but this is the state's Amazon. You can see it right now at $22.90. This one's $22.90 as well. And this one here is sitting at $21.99. I'm gonna leave a link to all three in the comments below uh, just because I don't know which one to go with. They all seem to be out of stock at this moment. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. I will be doing an overclocking video very shortly. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.